Okay, we're gonna get started. My name is Dan Havens. I'm the Senior Vice President of Sales for a company called Ormuco, and my partner in crime is Jason Krillich over here. I'm gonna tell you right out of the gate, sometimes I'm accused of sounding like I believe I have lightning in a bottle. Some of you are gonna look at me like this is a canned infomercial and I apologize, but I do promise that I will not be selling the slap chop and I will not be trying to sell you steak knives. However, if I was selling you steak knives, my steak knife could definitely cut through an engine block and still perform radiokeratotomy eye surgery. Now, I have a booth over there, about 17 paces from that chair there that I have already paced off. My goal today is one thing, to peak enough interest that you will take 17 steps and go to my booth right over there, Omuko, where you will see other high energy engineers and solution providers pitching what I'm considering this lightning in a bottle. My agenda today, I want to talk about the company very briefly. I want to talk about the challenge we're trying to address. I think it's one of the biggest challenges for the entire room. As most people here know, we're going through the biggest paradigm shift in the history of compute, and everybody's trying to capitalize on that. We want to just give you a peek into the strategy that we've chosen. And then finally, we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about um, uh, the economics of the deal. And again, if I'm successful, we're going to give you a test drive really quickly. And those of you that don't quite believe yet, we want to be able to show you the proofs in the pudding back here behind the stage. You want to click? Okay, Ormuco, we started out in 2008, so we've been around a while, and we were a telco to start. We found our money and a lot of growth in 2011 by becoming a company for the back end of gaming companies. We were a managed service provider for that space. If you think of Hollywood, what Hollywood is to movies, Montreal is to gaming. So if you have an Xbox or your kid has an Xbox, there's a very good chance you're sitting in our data center at some point. 2013, we made a transition. We decided that we were going to go into the software world. We recognized from our clients the demands of what we're considering hybrid cloud. We believe we were first in our class and we were front of edge. We made a very smart decision in going with OpenStack. And we came out in 2015 with our product offering. We are a software company now. Our goal is to be an arms dealer for the managed service providers and the enterprises out there that are trying to harness this beast. We came out in 2015 and we've been growing very aggressively. As a matter of fact, for those of you who are sitting in the audience whose feet might be putting to sleep at your current employer, we are growing very aggressively worldwide. We would love to talk to you. Come by and at a minimum, shake our hand and introduce yourself. The challenge, go ahead and hit the next slide. The first thing we try to do is we try to define cloud. Cloud's a really abused term. So let me define it the way we think of it. And if you believe that, then this will all make sense. And if you don't, then you'll at least see the angle that I'm taking with this. We believe that cloud is not a destination. It is a delivery model. People do not use Amazon Web Services because they want their data in Seattle. They use Amazon Web Services because it's easy. It's right now. It's elastic. It's self-service. It's all those cloud things. That's why there's shadow IT. People are searching for that. The challenge is most workloads of the enterprise aren't supposed to go public. Some countries, they can't even leave the country. 60, 70 different numbers, depending on who you ask, but a majority of the workloads are not getting the sex appeal and the facelift of cloud. That's the low-hanging fruit for everybody in this room. Hybrid. Hybrid is that term that says, hey, I do both. I've got a public cloud and I got a private cloud. We know who the public clouds are. As a matter of fact, the story that, pro the company that probably has the best story, and I can't believe I'm gonna say this in public, but the company that has the best story for hybrid is probably Microsoft. They have this Azure thing, everybody knows what that looks and feels like, and they have this Azure stack thing that's supposed to come, which is their play on, how am I gonna address the 75% of these workloads that can't leave the building? Now, not often do you see a sales guy put his competitor front stage in a slide, but it is my belief that in this space and with any space, competition actually defines the space. I think they've done a good job. You'll all agree there would be no such thing as a Luke Skywalker if there wasn't a Darth Vader. Without Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker would be nothing more than a hotshot rocket ship jockey in white jammies who is working his sister. Fact. So, 
Hybrid is this component of public-private, but you have to have an operating system to do it. 451 and other reports all sneak off of Forbes. I can talk to this letter for letter, but let's summarize. 60-something, 60-something, 60-something. The enterprises of the world in 2017 are looking for a solution to this problem. Many of them, most of them, are angling toward their managed service provider, their experts, the people like you who know this stuff. I need you to solve this problem for me because, again, their users are going around for the new treatment, the new sex appeal of cloud. The faster that managed hoster, the faster that IT department within the enterprise can satisfy that itch, the faster you go control, gain control of your data or you gain control of new incomes. This is the dilemma for a service provider. Many get out of the gate and they decide we're going to build this thing. We have four million man hours into our product. This is not an easy lift. It's expensive. There's a large capex. You've got to be fully committed. This is not a me too. This is a, you typically do what you do best. If you're a managed service provider, be the best managed survivor, provider on the planet. If you're a software vendor, be the best. When you mix those two, it's difficult. We're looking for those partners because we are not going to be that cloud. We're looking for the managed service providers that want to be that cloud. We can put you in business 30 days after your hardware is cabled and we're making money together. Now many managed providers are saying, I've got demand for AWS and Azure. What do I do with that? If I don't satisfy the demand, they're going to not only take that demand, they're going to take their current old school managed white glove, whatever you're calling it, demand with them. So you pass it on through and you take your 10% margin. Challenge with that is you just sent your customer down the street. And typically, once the toothpaste is out of the tube, it does not go back in. Very few of these things reverse themselves. So what we're trying to do is make you aware there are options where you can have your own branded Azure-like, AWS-like service at superior economics. Turnkey, fully managed, here comes my commercial. But if you follow along, hit the next slide. This is my favorite piece. One more. We're going to drive, because I'm sure you're already tired of talking to the sales guy, but this is key. These guys are making a killing at those price points. I just grabbed a random mix. If you guys want to do it, you can grab any mix that you want. I grabbed a random mix off the internet, and I compared prices. Bottom line is there is a ton of dough for anybody that puts this in front of their customer and add the caveat that you don't only provide a better price and service, but you can do it from the privacy of their own cage. You can do it from the privacy of their own data center. You will take control. Azure Stack, again, probably the furthest down the path, getting the most traction, no doubt. But again, they have their Microsoft agenda. You want to be able to be open to everything. Why do I have economics like that? Because the people in this room. We made a decision a long time ago. I wasn't part of the decision. I get no credit. But that decision gives us very powerful openness and gives us very powerful economics. The challenge is it's not turnkey out of the box right now. It's a beast to manage. We have added 4 million man hours to make it turnkey out of the body, out of the box and managed. So that's the setup. We're going to take a quick test drive. Obviously we've just touched the surface. If I've done my job and my boss is in the crowd, I'm not going to let you know who he is so you can't make bad comments to him. But if I've done my job, I'm going to get some of you to make the 17 pace track over to our booth to drill down a little further. Because I assure you, I might sound like an infomercial, but my stuff does not break when you bring it home. Thank you for putting up with me. Go ahead. Am I mic'd up? <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Got me on too? Uh, thank you. My name is Jason Krillich. I'm showing my demo here. These are our partners, that partner with our MUCO, HP being one of them. I'm going to walk you through a number of sets. This is a federated solution with a single pane of glass with single sign-on to manage multi-clouds. And what you're seeing here is the Omuco data center here in Montreal. And I can show you the instances, the volumes we created here, multi-language support, and most importantly, what we always are challenged with is billing. 
How am I billing my partner? How am I consuming compute? I'm able to drill down granularly to see where these projects are going and how they cost. Most of the challenges that we face today with public cloud, those bills are hard to manage. So think about projects. What projects am I managing today? How do I manage these projects? We do that by creating them, assigning users, assigning roles, and most importantly, assigning privileges so you can manage these projects efficiently. And the permissions that I create for them are very granular, which gives me better control and how I can manage my stack. When I create my stack, whether it be Windows or Linux, I can choose from a number of different images that we provide you, or you can bring your own in, an ISO image or a snapshot, and you can keep thinking about these projects and these volumes and how we can create a storage volume powered by Ceph. All this hard work, everything that we put together, down to networking, all software defined, routers, IP addresses, load balancers, VPN, the two years, the four million lines of code you see here is what we're presenting today. This is our cloud storage you just saw. This is our auto scaling. You're managing this project. I'm going to create a stack. I'm going to choose a number of VMs I want to create, Windows or Linux. And as I drill down, I can determine how many of the number of instances I want to scale up or scale down. What's the benefit of this? Costs. Time. So when we get there, I get an opportunity to take advantage of storage. This is all built within the platform, all the work that we did to create an easy way for you for both block and object storage powered by Ceph. I'm loading up my image here. I can store any image I like in my private cloud, in my data center. Very easy to do. And then as I get to the point of actually managing all of these individual VMs over here on the right panel, I can create them, I can select them, I can start them up, I can shut them down, I can reboot them, I can resize them. As you see here, I'm resizing this image. I can see all the data, the I.O. I can dive in deep, granularly to see how my VMs are, are functioning. I'm going to create a VM, Linux, Windows, ISO image, snapshot. Think about the quotas that we put together here. We assign a quota for you to assign to your compute. I'm choosing a quota. I'm spanning how many instances I can put, spin up in your private cloud. This is very easy for you to do. It is simple. It's so simple that I can demonstrate it. It's very simple to use. So, as I think about my VMs I'm creating, I see more of the performance monitoring. I can actually resize this image while I pause it and resize it. Some of our customers today thought that was very important while the image is still live. You can see my instance here being fully successfully loaded. And we all live in command line, of course. This is me getting to my command line to do the real work that needs to be done and I can assign the, those command line privileges throughout. So this is a brief overview, obviously, of what we do. I think what's most important here is that this is all part of OpenStack, how we have built this platform and combined our own 13 key services that makes this solution so unique. We're very glad to be here. We hope to hear more from you. As Dad mentioned, we are hiring. We'd like to hear more about your thoughts over at our booth over there. Thank you for your time. So just to close up really quick, most of our customers come out of the gate and they want the table stakes. They want compute, they want storage, they want network. We get that. But as you're starting to sell this, we've got the experience that they're trying to buy or come into a platform. If you're going to offer a platform, you have to have a platform that can do next. One of our largest partners, a very strategic partner of ours is Hewlett Packard Enterprise. They spearheaded a long time ago and it became its own entity, an entity known as Cloud28. Think of Cloud28 as a consortium of services worldwide, ISVs worldwide, SIs worldwide, that work within this framework. The idea is when you pick a platform to go to your customer, you want to know you have a menu of many, many, many options. And by the way, that menu grows every single day. How does it grow? We don't have to code for that menu. All of those ISVs want access to our customers. We're going in the world's largest service providers now. 
They're trying to integrate to this so that they can have access to those enterprise customers. When you stand this up in your managed service provider strategy, you have that catalog now and it's only growing by the day. Driven by the sealed field sales force of the Hewlett Packard Enterprises of the world. So something to think about, again, that's a bit down the road for people that are just starting out with wanting to offer real true cloud access to compute and storage. But anybody that happens to be in the advanced class and is taking that next chapter, we would love to have the conversation. And if you happen to be an ISV that wants access to those clients, please swing by and we will show you the roadmap for that. So I appreciate this late in the day, you guys putting up with us. We're gonna head over there and anybody that's interested, please somebody walk over there so I can keep my job. But you don't have to stay long, but we appreciate you putting up with us. Thank you very much. Out.